What's up everybody, it's Carl's Collects Comics and I'm back with part two of my uh, Comic Collecting for Beginners video series. In this part we're going to be talking about how to store your comic collection. I can't wait to get started, so stay tuned. Alright, so here we are. This is part two of a video series that I'm very excited about. It's Comic Collecting for Beginners. In this part, we're going to be talking about how to store your comic collection. I'm going to give you some practical tips, but I'm also going to give you some strategic tips to use now before your collection gets too big and out of control. Um, the reason I'm doing this series is because I want new collectors to enjoy the hobby and not let it get out of control, take control, or become a burden instead of being the enjoyment that it should be. So here are four easy steps that I've come up with for how to store your comic collection. Step number one is to count your collection and predict your growth. Now what does that mean? Okay, so how many single issues do you currently have? As we talked about, a single issue is one 22 to 32 page issue, very skinny. How many of these do you have? You know, do you have also collected editions like trade paperbacks? Or do you have bigger ones like omnibuses or uh, bigger coll specialized coll collection editions like Marvel Masterworks or something like that? All right, um, what value are the books in your current collection? Are they Silver Age books that maybe you inherited from a parent or a grandparent? Are they brand new books that just came out this week and you got them for New Comic Book Day and you're looking for ideas for how to store them? Um, how, many how many monthly titles are you currently subscribed to? Are you going out and just buying boxes of comics at, at garage sales or from other, other collectors to get your collection started? Are you buying mystery boxes that have 25, 50, 100 comics in them, just random assorted comics? How are you getting those comics and how many of them are you going to be bringing in on a monthly basis? These are all questions to ask yourself so you can start figuring out, hey, this is how I'm going to store my comic collection. So that's part of counting your comic collection. Um, you definitely want to be asking yourself, you know, under the predict your growth section, you want to be asking yourself, how fast am I going to be adding new books? If you think that you might be going out and buying um, a small collection from somebody else that's getting out of collecting, or if you might be buying, um, you know, lots of comic books, Think through where you're going to store them. Don't just show up at home with a whole bunch of boxes of comic books and say, okay, now i got to figure out some place to put them. Um, be thinking about that even now before, you know, even as you're just getting started, be thinking about how to do that, um, what to do with those. You know, if you're subscribing to one title a month, 10 titles a month, 20 titles a month, um, this is going to determine how quickly and how much of your monthly comic purchase um, purchases needs to go towards supplies and storage. Okay, so you want to count your collection and predict your growth. Step two is to know the basics. All right, so I want to go through just a couple of the basic, the most basic things. All right, so bags. You hear us talk about bags and boards. All right, a bag is simply a clear bag that's used for putting the comic book inside of. I showed you that um, a minute ago with this copy of Adventure Man number five. Okay, this is just a simple poly bag with basically a poster board, backing board, and a piece of my favorite uh, blue painter's tape to seal it. That's it. All right. Now, like I said, the quality of the bags is going to vary. You know, as I said earlier. Um, <clears throat> you're going to need to choose the appropriate solution um, for your needs. My personal rule of thumb is the older the book, the better quality of bag you need to get for it. All right, um, next term, boards, uh, backing boards. Um, you know, whether they're like a post, uh, poster board like this, or maybe it's more archival quality, like I've referenced them before, the Comet Clear, 
um, backing boards. There, there is an acrylic plastic backing board in this comic book, but because it's part of my Submariner run um, from the Silver Age, I'm going to, um, well, you know, silver going into bronze, I'm going to, I have it with um, an ac acrylic clear plastic uh, backing board. And this is pretty firm. These are a lot stronger even than the most strong cardboard ones. So I put books that are a little bit higher dollar in those. Um, but, you know, again, like I said, if, if, it's, if the book is a brand new book, then just a basic board um, should suffice. It should be fine. You don't need to get Mylars or an acid-free backing boards for that. Um, what this does is it helps to support the comic book, um, and it also helps to keep your collection from damaging itself uh, within the storage box or drawer. Um, you might have been to local comic shops, and you'll see they start to get pressed into place when, they, when they're, they're uh, just lumped inside of a, a box. Um, you don't want that to happen to your personal collection. You want to have the the um, the books kept upright and and not leaning back and with the weight of the front books pressing onto the back books that's a very easy way to damage your books um, third thing third uh, essential supply is tape um, some people prefer self sealing bags where there is uh, there is a strip of adhesive on the back of the bag and the flap comes down and presses onto it um, I am not really, I don't, I don't really use those anymore. I used them at one point, but I decided to go with something much simpler uh, that had a more practical reason for it that is actually a, a favorite of a lot of comic collectors that have been doing this for a while, and that's uh, 3M Blue Painting Tape, Painter's Tape. Um, this is designed to not be um, the type of adhesive that can that can ruin surfaces. That's why it's used for painting because they can the painters can put it down and paint over it and then pull it right back up without pulling anything off of whatever they're trying to protect. Um, it's it's uh, it's fairly inexpensive. It's about three dollars for a good quality roll. I don't suggest going to the dollar store for their painters tape because it is different. It's a different type of tape. But I don't I don't necessarily trust it with my comic books. Um, so I use the 3M Blue Painter's Tape. This is the Scotch Blue number 2090. I use it without any kind of writing on it. And the reason I do that is because the practical reason is that when I put a small piece of the Blue Painter's Tape, I can actually write on it and put little notes. Um, I put the grade of my book and I also put the um, whether or not it needs a clean and press. Sometimes I put what I bought it for so I can keep track of that. The way I do this, this is a little freebie, I, I didn't have this in my script, is I put, uh, I use a two, um, two uh, writing uh, uh, edge sharpie. Um, one fine point and one, reg and one medium point. Or no, it's fine and ultra fine is what this one is. So I always keep one of these in my desk so I can write on the blue painter's tape. The other thing I keep is I don't tear because I'm very OCD, so I always keep a pair of scissors that I can use to clip the tape and, uh, and, and store the book and get it to the appropriate size because I'm, I'm just weird like that. Um, so I, I highly... Um, I, I very, I'm very passionately against using scotch tape in any way, shape, or form with comic books. Um, that is can be a death sentence for your comic book cover um, because scotch tape adhe adheres so quickly, and they don't necessarily, you know, when they manufacture it, they don't make it to not leave residue or to not leave adhesive behind. So that's something to, you know, I just don't even use scotch tape at all. I would just switch straight over. Uh, the the three dollar investment is well worth it. Um, to prevent that tear or catch. Um, I know other people have different processes. I'm not going to you know, say they're wrong or right or whatever. I'm just telling you what I like to do for uh, my best practices for my comic collection. Um, <clears throat> also, just you know, quick aside, masking tape is a no-no. Even some of the archival tape from the uh, from like Hobby Lobby, I've tried that. That still is not as good as the blue painter's tape. Um, and packing tape. No. Boxes. Okay, so comic storage boxes come in a variety of sizes and materials. Uh, the basic comic short box is more than suitable for, um, for most uses. 
you know, if you're collecting books that are $50 and up in value per book, um, you know, if, if it's above that, you might consider corrugated plastic boxes. I've never used them. Or the BCW plastic bins, which are really cool for folding. But the simple, basic cardboard short box is perfectly adequate for most collectors' needs. Um, one thing that I didn't have in my notes that I wanted to share is uh, store folios. These can store uh, between 10 and 15 books depending on the size of the, uh, of the book. Um, the newest ones are magnetic. This little flap here just opens and there's the books right there. What I do when I'm just collecting a few keys in a certain run is I'll go ahead because they have the um, insert. I'll print out an insert here. This has my old like logo thing on it, but this is for Submariner. Um, yeah, for the Submariner books, I'll just or like for some of the books, I have a shelf of just these, and that's another option for storing it. Like if you want, if you have a bookshelf and you're not and you're only getting higher dollar books, that can actually be a safer way to store some of the really high dollar books. Uh, shelves or drawers. Okay, um, you know, as your collection grows beyond a couple of boxes, um, you're going to need to store the boxes and that's going to become an increasing pressure. So a few quick tips on this front, um, just personal preference again in the way I do it. Uh, don't stack the boxes. Um, I know that um, it's the easiest way to get them out of the way quickly and you know if like if your significant other or wife is, is griping about it, it's the quickest way to do it, like shove it in the corner of a closet and stack them on top of each other. Um, but you risk hurting yourself by repeatedly lifting the boxes to get to some of them. I've done that before, hurt my back. Um, you could you risk bugs or rodents damaging your books. You know, depending on what room you have them in and, and whether or not you have pest control issues. Um, and then you risk damaging the books if a corner of a box starts to cave in. That's happened too. You know, if you if you miss stack the boxes in a hurry, um, you could put much heavier full boxes on top of ones that are not as full. And over time, they can just start to slowly crush it. So you you lose a box in the process because those aren't safe to stack to put your comics in anymore. Um, and then you can risk hurting the books inside. So don't stack the boxes. Um, number two, look at what you already own. Uh, many of the popular cube shelves in homes, like those types from Ikea and Target, um, those will accommodate the size of a short box. Um, consider trading with your wife or your significant other. You know, say, hey, you get a brand new one if I get the old one that maybe is a little bit scratched up and whatever for comic storage. That can, you know, keep spouse happy and it can have the added benefit of um, you know of, of getting you something with with minimal cash outlay um, uh, let's see yeah um, other options in looking at what you already own uh, filing cabinets with drawers is another hand-me-down that's well worth the trip to pick one up uh, people are giving those things away for free at this point because nobody uses them um, there is actually a Facebook group on uh, that is just about comic book filing cabinets, which I thought was fascinating. Uh, there's guys who have, you know, like they, they know all the measurements. There's certain filing cabinet drawers that will fit an entire short box just down inside of the, the drawer. And stacking your books in a drawer is the ideal way to store your comic books. And um, so... So yeah, so I, I want to say that uh, steel wire shelving and um, garage style shelving are also good options if you have some of those and you can clean one up and bring it inside to a climate controlled area like a closet or a loft or, or something like, you know, or a special room just for it. Um, that's a great way to get some, some shelving is just to look around you and see what you already have. Some of the shelving that I use, this wire shelving, um, I got it for like 20 bucks at a local antique shop that was closing up and they just need to sell off their shelving. I got a ton of great shelving for, for like pennies on the dollar. Um, these are just a few of the basics to know and learning how best to, like the supplies for storing your comic collection. Uh, step number three, plan for the future. Take, I can't stress enough, take the time now to investigate the options that are out there for comic storage specific to what your needs are. Um, you know, research the pricing, 
the capacity, um, and then pre-visualize your own space that you know is the best option for you. And it's going to be different for everybody. You know, if you're a, a young single guy or gal living in, an, in a one-bedroom apartment, um, and you know you're not going to be living in that apartment forever, hey, you know, your storage may not be the same as, you know, somebody who's married with kids, a house, um, you know, a little bit more space. So you need to, you need to um, plan for the future based on what you're doing. You know, and obviously you're going to change it out. I've gone through so many different iterations of comic storage, um, pretty much almost all of them. Um, and, and even the arrangement that I have now is not what it's going to be once it's all said and done. Um, the example that I'll use for this point is uh, before purchasing the Nerdstalgia set of storage cabinets that I currently have, and you can see one of them right here behind me. Um, this, this storage cabinet is made by a company that I found on Instagram called Nerdstalgia. Um, Tim and his wife, uh, great people, and they make custom comic storage furniture. They have a massive line of products. You could, they can make pretty much anything that you can dream up. Um, but before I'd gotten these, uh, I'd been researching and I'd found them almost a year prior to when I actually purchased these pieces. Um, you know, I knew what I wanted, what I could expect to spend, and what they were, well, what they were so that uh, when this setup, because I have this and then I have a slabbed one over here in the walkway in the uh, collector's cave, and um, I knew exactly what they were. And I knew the value of them and how much money I'd be saving when they came up for sale pre-owned by, by, by another local collector. So, it, so because I had done the research prior and I knew what I wanted, I knew what I could expect to spend, I had my cash laid out ready to go, um, not specifically for that, but just for collecting, um, I was able to move very aggressively and, and immediately get out there and already know that I knew that I, I didn't have to ask questions. I didn't have to, um, you know, bug the seller for different, I just messaged him and I said, hey, I want to buy them. Where can, when can I come meet you? I've got cash in hand. I know exactly what they are. I'm ready to buy. And, and he said, okay, yeah, because he'd been getting peppered with questions and people asking, so what are these? What, you know, how do they work and what do they do? No, I already knew all that because I had researched. So when uh, Nerdstalgia helped him by posting about them, I knew immediately, hey, I, I, I need to get those because this is the cheapest I'm ever going to get some of this furniture. Um, but, even, you know, even then, um, I already know that I want to buy some, eventually I want to buy some of their newer furniture um, that has drawers. You know, these are stackers, but I want to get ones with drawers, and, and I want to get them spec'd to, to my sizes and to my collection. Um, but, you know, these are, this, is what, this is the planning for this stage of my comic collecting. So, um, so I, I want to encourage you to do that because it's well worth it. You know, this is, and this is also that perfect time to lay out your own collector's cave um, setup, whether it's the corner of one room, whether it's a closet, whatever. It might be, whatever your nerd haven is, <coughs> it's always a good idea to have that in mind so you can maximize your dollars with proper planning. Step number four, okay, uh, most important one, I think, of um, how to store your comic collection is to respect your investment. Step number four is to respect your investment. Um, now, when we talk about comic storage, this is the biggest takeaway that I can offer to you. Respect your investment. You know, but what exactly does that mean, though? You know, some, uh, some collectors will say, uh, you know, I'm not a comic speculator or investor. Uh, I'm just a collector who does it for the fun of the hobby. I don't think of it as an investment. I hear that a lot. Um, but, you know, with all due respect, I want to encourage you to... Um, wisely recognize and re respect the investment that you're making in this hobby. You know, not to make money or get comic gains, but to understand 
uh, that you will invest your time, your money, um, your physical space, and other resources into this hobby. Uh, so respect that by giving just a little bit of planning and, and thought to how you're going to do so. You know, a, a side note is that, um, you know, that I want to mention is remember um, that what you invest in your new comic co collecting hobby will, by default, um, take time and money away from other priorities. Um, you know, you want to make sure to, to set and keep boundaries so that the hobby doesn't consume you, um, you know, and every hour outside of your job. I mean, trust me, this is something that I personally have to keep tabs on. Um, you know, I have a wife and family, um, a, you know, a job, my health, my relationship with God, um, you know, a, a bunch of priorities that are more important than comic books. And so I have to recognize and rein in that, hey, every hour or dollar that I spend on comics is an hour or a dollar that I'm taking away from other areas and priorities. And, and yeah, this is hitting really close to home for me. <laughs> so, because I'm, it, 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 Matt, I'm just totally recalling certain conversations with my wife about it. Um, I want, but I want to give you an example, okay? Um, because this is an encouragement. This is one of the fun things about the hobby um, and, and something that just kind of worked out. I bought a book for um, personal enjoyment. I thought I was going to hold on to it for a little while. Yeah, I thought, you know, maybe I'll sell it or something. And then the market spiked. Um, and, you know, I, I went ahead and got the book pressed, cleaned, and slabbed, which is uh, getting it encased in a CGC case. Um, you know, so then flash forward to, um, you know, maybe a year or two later, in summer of 2021, uh, we'd been planning a family vacation. Um, you know, I knew that we wanted to do something a little bit uh, special for that year, so uh, we decided to rent a small beach house for a few nights. Um, you know, and, and so I made the decision on my own. My wife didn't know I was making the decision, but I just, I made the decision. I had this book. Um, the book was um, Edge of Spider-Verse number two in a CGC 9.6. Um, and it, which is the first appearance of Spider Gwen. Uh, today, as of the recording of this book, I think it's like an eight to nine hundred dollar book. At the time that I uh, sold it, it was about a seven hundred dollar book. Um, I sold it to pay for the majority of that family vacation. And here's the big takeaway uh, with with me sharing the story. You know, um, I have never once since selling it second guessed the decision to sell that book to pay for that family vacation because the memories from the family vacation um, are priceless in comparison to a comic book I can always go back and buy another copy of that book spend some extra money and buy another copy of the book um, but I can't ever recapture that summer um, when my family was that age, you know, uh, son was that age, dog was that age, and my wife and I were that age. I can't ever recapture that summer to do it. So, um, you know, to, to, to redo that, that, vac that opportunity. So, um, you know, the values of the memories that were made on that family vacation far outweigh anything. Yeah, that's, that's a little freebie. Um, and that's why I say to respect, um, Respect your uh, respect your investment because if you respect it, it's going to come back around and benefit you later on. And I'm not just talking about dollar wise, but I'm saying you know personal enjoyment because you'll be able to look at it. You know, um, collaboration, sharing it with other collectors, all the different joys that come into the hobby. Even just appreciating it yourself um, when you respect that investment with with proper comic storage. And, and a little bit of forethought um, for a story in your collection, uh, you'll be able to enjoy it for years to come and maybe even, uh, you know, s sell parts of it at different times in your collecting uh, career to, uh, to pay for, for things that are of, of greater value than, uh, than expensive paper. <laughs> so, um, so, hey, thanks for tuning in for, um, you know, for this, for part two of this video series. This has been... 
um, how to store your comic collection from the Comic Collecting for Beginners video series. Um, you know, if you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to like the video, comment below, um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and, and, uh, and make sure and hit that notification bell so you'll know the next time a new video goes live. Uh, make sure if you haven't already to check out part one of this series in case you missed it, and be back here next weekend for part three. I'm Carl's Collects Comics, and I will see you next time.